Alrighty, so I've been getting kind of interested in playing VR again, so I figured I'd go ahead and try to, I guess, just make a little bit of stuff with it. So, I've already made a couple little things in another little project that I've been tinkering with, but I figured I'd go ahead and share kind of what I've learned and how to do things. So, you're also going to be kind of learning with me as I go. But, anyways, uh, to sum it up, long story short, what we're going to end up using for pretty much everything is the VR expansion plugin as that has made development, especially when it comes down to multiplayer in VR, drastically easier. Now, if you want to get a rough idea of what all I have done without that plugin to actually one, replicate and two, uh, solve some other problems that are not actually fully solved in multiplayer, I can give you a rough idea. So this is the test project where I made a just, this is my own character from the uh, first person example template. Now, to update the hand position, like, so you can see other people shake hands, you know, all that kind of stuff. What I ended up doing was in tick, just simply updating the hand position for the left controller and right controller to the server, and that ends up being replicated down to other clients. The other thing is, there is an issue with things like the character movement component, for example, or the, even the pawn movement, where you have to have the root component be the capsule or at least a capsule be kind of what is moved by the component. So this you have with this, by default anyways, is if your character has the capsule as the root, and then we go down and inside of that we have the camera, which is obviously what your headset when you walk around and all that kind of stuff is kind of attached to, you have the problem of you can leave your capsule. So if I'm standing in the center of the world and I walk straight left you, because of room scale, well, I'm now walked out of my capsule. So I need a way to make my capsule stay with the camera while also doing a couple other things like keeping the corresponding offset so I can walk my way back to it and still have normal locomotion. So I have normal locomotion set up just pretty much all the same. Uh, this can honestly be ignored now, I'm pretty sure. But the way I went about fixing that was I simply got the camera location and same thing with the VR component location, which is just a scene component, and that scene component kind of acts as the root to anything VR related, so it's kind of like all its own little container. And then what we ended up doing was we had to move ourselves, so we moved our own actor to the location of the headset. So we're pretty much, whenever we move around in the real world, that movement is getting translated into the game. So our capsule and stuff is following our camera this way, so that way we don't actually leave our capsule. And then we ended up setting the VR component back to its original position, so it's kind of got its own offset. Then, same thing, we went through, got the camera's location again, just completely fresh, because, uh, as you can see here, I'm modifying it. Wait, no, actually I did something different. Oh, yeah, so I never long need, no longer needed to do, uh, do that. Anyhow, so we created another F vector for the camera location. We go through and we want to alter our mesh. So like your arms, if you're going to use that, or assuming you're not using just a normal kind of motion controller meshes, like just hands, like in a, something like onward, if you ignore the body that's below you. Then this is kind of the, what you'd have to end up doing as well. You would move the mesh alongside with the camera. So that way it's always kind of attached right below you without being attached because you don't want the mesh to be attached. What you have is I have the mesh attached to the VR component, so it's just a child of it, just like our camera and everything else. But then when you move around, the mesh gets updated to wherever your camera is, so it kind of tracks it along. And now, to begin, all I have here is just the first person example, or the first person template. I have the project open, and we're going to go ahead and just install the VR expansion plugin. Now, if my voice sounds a little bit quiet I can't quite tell my microphone's kind of farther away because I am way outside of my bounds for room scale or my room scale setup as well as in order for me to access the two controllers that are on the end of my table and the headset I have to go underneath of the mic because of where it's positioned so it's kind of a pain so I have it where it's at so hopefully it's not too quiet anyhow this website will be linked in the description and obviously because I can tell you right now, this is a massive plugin for VR, and it's what really should 
kind of be, uh, I guess, already included inside of Unreal Engine because it makes the life a lot easier. It's got a lot of fancy techniques for replicating everything you need. And just overall, it's kind of, it's almost it's not mandatory, but it probably should be. <laughs> Anyways, now if we go to repository slash code, main plugin repository, and I take it to the git. Just go ahead and download it. And I've already done that here. I want to open it up, go to my project folder. Never gonna pay for one RAR. Uh, we're gonna create a new folder called plugins. Open that on up, and oops, we want to drag this right on in. And I just realized I downloaded the wrong thing. Ignore that for a second. So yeah, you have to download this. I messed up and I had the uh, wrong thing downloaded. So I'm just gonna download zip. Hopefully it doesn't screw with anything because I've noticed some issues with it. Just like that because this should not be nearly that small. But it possibly contains everything in it. Uh, actually, yeah, because there's no content. Anyways, just like before, you have the VR expansion plugin master. You can just drag and drop. Go into our project up here, manage plugins. And currently, nothing shows up, so I'm going to restart the editor. And just hit yes. Okay, so it did that, it relaunched the project. Just click update and hit manage plugins. So now if we click installed, we have the OpenVR expansion plugin checked, as well as the VR expansion plugin. Now you want to make sure those are enabled, and if we come over here to the uh, content browser, we can actually see the two plugin folders. So if you don't see them, go to view options, show plugin content, because as you can see, it hides and shows it. So make sure to do that. Now, the only other thing we're really probably going to be doing in this video is we're going to create a base class to essentially just work off of. So, for now, I'm going to delete the first person character out of the project, or out of the level. Go to VR Expansion Plugin, C++ Classes, open the folder, public, and find the VR character. So, this is what we want to create our base class off of. So, we're going to go ahead and Go to our C++ classes, create a new C++ class. Go all, and we're going to search for, let's just search for character. To do that, we search down. We can see the VR character. Next. And give it a name. And I'm just going to call mine tutorial. So tutorial VR character. Set it to public, and create the class. Alrighty, now that it's done, I gotta spam close Visual Studio because it keeps launching. But once that's done, your IDE should update. And we now have the character here. So what I want to do now is I want to go and open up the character and create a blueprint copy of it. So let's create a blueprint class derived from it. And let's just call it BP underscore tutorial character. And I'll put it in the content folder so we can just kind of see what all it contains. Let me save real quick. So, what are the components that we have? Well, you can kind of think of this as the base character. Like, not VR character or anything, but like the base character that you would get inside of Unreal Engine. So we have the capsule, and we have our arrow component. And then inside of it, we kind of have our, what do you call it? Kind of like that, remember the VR component I was talking about, that little subsection just for VR? That's what you kind of have in here. So we have the net smoother, which is his own, whatever this actually is, I haven't looked through it. And then we have our mesh that we can use for the character. And same thing goes, we have a normal camera, the left controller, and the right controller. And these are all his own classes. So as you can probably assume, by the name VR replicated character, it's set to rep like it's set up its own replication. So what I mean by that is if I go back to that example that I was referring to at the beginning regarding the camera movement and the capsule. So like replicating like when you walk around in the room scale, you want that to be replicated to other clients. Well, this current setup does not do that. 
you would have to implement your own kind of form of replication, replicate the camera's location or something along those lines, in order, well, the camera's up. Transform, well, actually, no, we don't need a rotation, so it would just be the translation. So you would have to do something along those lines to replicate that as well. Well, this is already kind of handling everything behind the scenes for you. So it's got its own character movement component and everything. Like, when I say this is a, like, full powerhouse of a plugin for VR, it really is. So we're going to... So anyways, the left motion controller and the right motion controller, those are their own... It's his own classes, so it's got its own functionality built in. But the thing is here, uh, if you're not 100% sure what motion controllers are, even though it's kind of explanatory in the name, when you pick up your VR controllers, you can kind of think of those as your motion controllers because, well, they are motion controllers. So what you do with those gets translated into these motion controllers. So what you end up doing is you'll have... Like what people commonly do is they will attach, assuming this is just vanilla, because we have our own motion controllers, as you can see here. What you end up seeing is they'll attach a static or a skeletal mesh to these in the form of hands. And then whenever you move your controllers around, because the static meshes or the skeletal meshes attached to them, you can see the hands moving around in the world. And that's how you would trigger the animation. You're not doing that kind of stuff on the motion controller per se. You're doing that on the linked mesh. So thankfully we also have inside of his, if we scroll down a bit, go to visualization, we can display the device model. So we can check it, do the same thing for the right motion controller, compile, save, and let's drop this guy right down in here. We are going to set, uh, set it to possess player zero, save it, come up here, drop down, and we're going to hit VR preview. And uh, hopefully everything's on for, yep, it is. So, and as you can see now, I move my headset around. I don't have it on, but you can see my controllers, so I can move them around. Same thing if I stretch over here, I can move the right one around. As you can tell, the motion is uh, very jittery because I am probably, I'd say at least four feet outside of my play area right now. So <laughs> I'm a little bit far away from my trackers and I only have one pointed at me. And if it's not obvious, I am currently on the normal vibe. Like right now, my controller is not actually right there. So if I rotate it back down, it comes right back here and it teleports back. So that's going to be kind of fun to deal with uh, going through it. Anyways, that is the basics of just simply setting up a VR character. Now, the best part about this is if I can change this to listen server and play with two clients, you will see... And of course, it's using the wrong bloody thing. But you can kind of see. Let me also change out the character, not the character, the uh, game. Let me make a new game mode real quick. And this will be the default pawn class is our blueprint character that we just made. And let me set it real quick. And hopefully it should spawn the right one. Okay, which it's kind of is and kind of isn't. But so you can see the two controllers moving and everything. Let me move this out of the way. Go to the other one. You can see it's replicated. Now, same kind of deal. I actually can't really see it. Let me uh, unhide the capsule component. I'll uncheck hidden in game so we can actually see it. And hit play again. And that's the only other issue I've noticed as well. Uh, periodically, when I hit play, it kind of spawns you in the floor. But I don't have any movement set up. You can see the capsule component. And if I pick my head up, you can see the capsule component. Let me try to look up real quick. See the top? As I move it left and right, it's moving with us. And you can see... It's like it's mirroring what we're doing. 
which that's fine. But you can kind of see the movement. It's exaggerated because both of them are doing the exact same thing. They're kind of mirrored. But the capsule component is actually moving, and it's replicating the capsule position to other clients whenever I move the headset. So that gives us the ability, well, already built in, to actually replicate the room scale. So as we move around, that is replicated. So I pretty much rambled on enough for this little video because we haven't done anything interesting. We haven't done anything ourselves. So in the next video, we're going to start setting up and working with some basic things. Like we'll set up some locomotion. And yeah, that'll probably be it for the next video. And then we'll just we'll kind of do it step by step. So after that, we'll probably do things like gripping and all that. Anyhow, that's going to be it for this video. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below. Where one, you get early access to all my videos, as well as you get access to the Team Deathmatch series that is Patreon only, where we create Team Deathmatch and Unreal Engine with C++. As well as a couple other things like weapon customization and custom spawning that is included in that series. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord down below as well, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.